All right, right here we got a pad for a building site for a 12 by 12 pavilion that's gonna go up at my friend's house. He has the kit there on the trailer. That's the back of the house. And this here is what we'll be drilling the post holes with, Bobcat uh, MT55 from Nevco Rental, which they were so nice last time I was there to give me a nice dope hat, which I like to wear. Um, then I have some quick setting, quick crete for the posts and some concrete forms from Home Depot, which is where I get most of my stuff. Give you a little bit of a view into some of my equipment. I have this combo trailer, which is an eight foot flatbed and a 10 foot dump, which is great for hauling equipment or anything of the sort. All right, I got everything laid out here. I got eight bags of the uh, fast setting quick crete concrete mix to go along with my 12 inch cardboard forms, which I showed you before. This pad was done by the customer um, when they removed a bunch of trees around here. You can see a bunch of stumps yet laying around that are still orange, painted orange, they'll be removed eventually. But when they removed all the trees, they also made this nice little pad here. I did check with my six foot level and the pad is very, very level. So they did an excellent job. So I'm just going to set these forms in place and then make sure I got it level from one form to the other. As I, as I uh, do the front two forms, make sure they're level side to side, do the back two forms and base them as far as level off the front two forms here. The nice thing about this fast setting quickcrete, um, you can pour it in dry, soak it with water, and uh, it'll be set within 20 to 40 minutes. So uh, after I have all four of these columns poured, I'm going to return my skid steer, return that to the rental company, and by the time I get back, hopefully this will be ready to start um, building. All right, let me explain to you what this is. This is what I'm gonna to use to make sure all four of my columns are level. It is um, a laser level. The brand is Leica. And this specific model is the Rugby 680. And that has a, I don't know if you can see it here. It's a rotating laser level head there. And that has a rotating laser, which is received by this receiver head here, which gives off uh, a very fast intermittent beeping when you're too high, and a slower beep when you're too low, and a steady beep when you're right on. Let me demonstrate. It's beeping really fast because I was too high. When I get exactly level, right on the pad, A solid beep and if I were to go too low a slow beep now to set this laser level head you simply put the stick with the feet markings on here it's called a story pole you set the story pole on the pad that you want to take a shot off of 
I have this backwards so it's not beeping while I'm talking. Spin it around. And you simply move the, the head, the reader, up and down until you get your solid beep. Then you know you got your story pole and your reader set perfectly with your laser level head. And that's how we're gonna make sure that all four of these piers are exactly the same height so that our pavilion is level when the project is finished. All right, we're back here. I did not take a time lapse of me putting this part up. Um, it took really long. I was really struggling because I was working by myself. So I was really uh, struggling to get some of the pieces in place. Uh, they recommend that this is a two-part, uh, two-person job. And I will put a little screen recording in here of an app that I use. It's called Built. If you've never heard of it, check it out. Um, it has tons of different items in the app that it gives you step-by-step -step animated instructions, um, parts lists, so you can see what part you're actually supposed to be using. Now, I'll give you a couple tips here. Um, and we'll come back to these concrete piers in a minute because I, I messed up a little bit on those. It works, but it, it messed up a little bit. Um, the roof here, I did in a little bit, the, the not the order that they instructed me to do it. Um, and that's because I was working by myself. They, in the instructions, it says to put all the metal on the roof first and then slide it into place, slide the roof up. Um, on the rafters, there's a little board like right at the end there running parallel with this end rafter that each of these each of these guys here rests on the end of that board and so you can just put the roof together and slide the entire section up onto the roof that's how they tell you to do it it would have been way too heavy for one person to lift had i put all the metal on and stuff so I kind of did it this way, and uh, I'm gonna attach the metal afterwards. Um, each of the ends, um, the corner post, the other corner post, these beams here, and this short beam in the center, they all get attached and set up as an end unit. Then I took a two by 10 and propped one slanting this way, and one slanting that way against the end piece up there to keep the wall from falling over. Then I did the same thing on this end, and then I fastened these edge pieces here, which kept the whole thing square. And then I took away my two by tens, and then I put on the roof. So it took about all day to set this up, what I have so far. Again, that was working by myself to slide up these pre-put together roof pieces, which I did do. I put together the roof, basically, as you see it over here on the other side. I put together this roof on the ground. Uh, sorry, you can't see the ground's a little lower over here. Um, I put together the roof as it is now, right like that, and slid it up by myself. The directions uh, recommended that that would be a three-person job. I did it by myself, so I would absolutely recommend that you get a friend or two to help you put this thing together. The biggest thing where I think that you would benefit in having another person is of course setting up the pieces, but also getting the hardware all put together because there's a lot of washers and bolts and different pieces. Uh, even for some of the rafters and stuff, some of the pieces get bolted together before they get bolted to the gazebo. Um, so there's things like that that I think you should definitely have another person for. It would speed up the process. And I was really sore after putting this whole thing up by myself because there were some really heavy pieces. You're lifting at awkward angles to get it up on the roof. Uh, and I had to try to walk up a ladder while pushing the roof pieces into place. So it took a bit of a Herculean effort, but I made it this far. All right, we're totally done here with the project. We got the roof on. We got the forms off the concrete posts. I did promise I was gonna explain how I mismeasured for these posts. They're about 10 and a half feet from outside to outside. They're six by six posts. The forms I had, the concrete forms were 12 inch forms, if you remember from the beginning of the video. So I thought, okay, six by six post, 12 inch concrete post base. 
I need to, so if the posts are 10 and a half outside to outside, I need to make the concrete 11 and a half outside to outside instead of 10 and a half. Problem is, if the posts were supposed to be centered on the concrete, there's only three inches of overlap on each side. So I should have only outsized my concrete posts by six inches. So it should have been 11 feet instead of 10 and a half. So now the posts are sitting just inside. The posts are sitting just inside the concrete there. So that's not great. It does give the post anchor there on the outside a lot more, um, I don't know what you want to say. It gives it a lot more space, I guess. But it was supposed to have two angle brackets and obviously there's not room to put another angle bracket right here. So, or, or on the other side for that matter, right in there. Um, there was supposed to be one where there is one right there. And there was supposed to be another one on this side. All four posts only have one anchor. Um, yeah, I guess I won't gloss over it. This, my concrete was a little dry there. I'm gonna have to come back and use like a skim coat to patch over that rough spot there. But other than that, I think it turned out pretty nice. Got the roof on, beautiful metal uh, brackets and everything. It's it's perfect. Not quite, but it's good. It's really good. I, I like the way it looks and hopefully the customer is happy. It's a really dark stain. I love the way it looks in this green springtime. Um, can't wait to see what it looks like in the summer. Like I said, this is uh, at one of my friend's house, so it's possible that I'll be back here uh, later this summer but after a couple days of hard work by myself that's what the project looks like